Good morning. It is November 13th, a Saturday. Um, that's where the old water heater was. It is now laying in the grass outside. It was one hell of a chore. Getting it uh, up the stairs and outside. Not the lightest damn thing in the world to uh, lug around yourself. Fortunately, I had a set of forearm forklifts, which just work awesome. Um, but yeah, she was. Uh, it, it, it's had a tiny drip uh, at the bottom for tsh, years, almost as long as I've lived here. I've lived here, you know, going on uh, going on nine years. Yeah, um, something like that. Um, but uh, that started getting worse. You can see right here. Um, I cut small grooves in the concrete, uh, sloping downwards, kind of towards this uh, spot right here. That's got a drain underneath it that then goes over to the main drain. Um, I got a fan blowing on this, drying it out, because whatever, I dumped uh, 46 gallons of water on the floor, uh, getting that thing empty, squeegeed it across, you know, but there's still, uh, who knows, I don't have a clue how long that thing has been there, so there was some old, old grime and dust uh, behind there, and who knows how long it's been wet, so, um, but yeah, the tank was starting to leap from the top um, and drip all the way down the side and that was getting increasingly faster and faster and faster um, and when I shined a light on the welds on the top kind of you know where these guys go in I, I peeled these caps up and um, looked at the welds and they were wet all the way around them so that water was had already spilled all the way you know inside soaked the insulation inside of here and you know in between here and the actual tank uh, this is packed tight with insulation um, so that was completely waterlogged it was coming out the bottom and then coming out the top so it was starting to leak out fast enough that it was just spilling right out of this rim right here and running all the way down um, and with the welds compromised and you know whatever uh, it was time it was time for a new one I didn't want this thing to blow up because they can they can do that um, so we got a new guy but instead of the uh, natural gas one um, we cut the line and cap that off uh, we went with an electric tank because I can now use the DC element out of my small tank that was a 600 watt DC element um, 24 volt DC from Thermodyne I'm actually going to get another one um, so I'll have one down here and one in here this one will stay tied to the dump load control uh, to prevent over voltage and that will be you know tied to the the core system this one I'm gonna hardwire to uh, a couple solar panels um, and then have them switchable outside uh, or or inside I guess it doesn't matter the leads uh, coming in um, so in the winter time, I can switch those over and have that extra solar energy routed into the solar controller. I don't need that extra energy in the summer. I absolutely top off and float every single day um, all summer long. But coming into the fall, you know, November, basically uh, October and November are very gray months here, Wisconsin. And then uh, March and May are pretty gray months. Um, December to February, it's finally cold enough where you know the the clouds freeze up and the sun 
is actually quite bright and because it's so cold the panels are more efficient um, so we do fine from December to February you know but come March it starts to get gray again uh, till damn near the end of May um, Ah, end of April, May it starts clearing up. Anyways, I'll have that switchable. So in the winter time, I can make use of that extra four 100 watt panels. Uh, in the summertime, those four 100 watt panels will be high hardwired to this 600 watt uh, DC element. And I, you know, I don't want to have it at max load all day long, so I'll be running it at two thirds. Uh, of its power capacity um, and that'll just be on every time the sun is out and on really sunny days or when the wind picks up or whatever and battery starts getting real high if the wind turbine spikes and the dump load needs to kick on that guy will be up here I know obviously water tanks heat better from the bottom up but uh, the dump load will just help give us uh, really hot water that day I guess um, I don't expect to ever overheat and overpressurize this tank from the electrical heat system. Um, I'll test and see how good it works come springtime, uh, you know, for, for a daily heat source if, if I'm not getting up over 100, 110 just with that. I've still got the uh, solar thermo system that, you know, I've got time and money into so I can easily uh, tie that in and that can be, you know, uh, along with the summer system to help just make sure we got nice hot water for cleaning dishes and, you know, if I have a hard day and I want to take a damn bath or something like that, I don't have to take a cold bath. So. Um, I gotta run to the store, get some fittings. I'm gonna keep the fan blowing on this. See, it's already starting to dry off. That's cool. Get this dried off, sweep it out <laughs> uh, 12 more times, and get it real clean behind here. I'm gonna spray off and uh, clean up all these cobwebs and shit. Um, I've got these guys, the original pipes that, you know, were coming off of the old tank. They're still in good condition. There's no reason to make new ones, honestly. Um, I've got some real heavy duty thread sealant. Um, so I'm gonna get a sleeve for there and a sleeve <laughs> sorry, there and here um, and sweat those back on after I thread these onto the new tank. Um, and this is where the old natural gas was, you know, the exhaust from the old thing was vented. So maybe I'll find a cap to just jam in that hole because that's never going to be used again. So, um, yeah, I'm actually, you know, not a, exactly a cheap project because price of everything has gone up. <sighs> Let's go, Brandon. <laughs> um, but uh, whatever. It uh, I think it's going to work out to be a very effective and efficient system in the long run. And because it's a brand new tank, you know, it's going to be insulated so much better than the old one. So this will retain heat. Uh, in the summertime, you know, that, that was our biggest problem. It, you know, water would get nice and hot, so around 4 or 5 o'clock we had nice steaming hot water, but, you know, by by the next morning, it had cooled back down to 90, you know, 90, 85, like, well, what the crap? Um, and that's when we usually like to run the dishwasher is in the late morning when the sun just hits the panels and we got lots of juice coming in. Um, so... I think this guy's going to work out really good. 
I'm excited to get that in and put my basement back together. I had to move everything out of the way because I didn't, you know, the, the river of water going across, I didn't want everything getting soaked and destroyed. That's usually where my drum set is. So I got that rug rolled up and everything kind of all over the place right now. But excited to get her wrapped up, uh, filled up, pressurized, and warmed back up because uh, after this project, I could use a darn shower. So stay tuned. I got to run to the hardware store. I'll be back and uh, I don't know, do a step by step. All right, later. Okay, so got the new tank in. Uh, plumbed. <laughs> Instead of going with uh, copper sleeves and sweating it all in, the beautiful, wonderful country that we are uh, this was just sitting on the shelf there and it actually wound up being cheaper getting the two different pieces they're the shark bite so it just grabs onto the old copper you uh, clean up your cut chamfer a little bit sand it down with some emery cloth or some 220 you know something real nice and fine so whatever um, jam it up in there real tight and once it pressurizes sometimes a single drop will come out of there sometimes nothing but uh, they're they're on there real good and then uh, there's our uh, in from the line so cold and then our hot out um, the pressure relief valve was on the tippy top of this one that guy's out of there crank some three-quarter inch copper on and then fitting it down to half inch uh, FIC for the pump, brought her back out with a T and a cap on it. Um, so going into the coil and then coming out of the coil brings us down to this guy, which is currently draining again because you know, and I should have known, I should have just chuck this right from the start. I saw this plastic thing and I thought, you know, that's that's going to be a problem. Um, but <sighs> that was really stupid not to just go ahead and replace this right away. So it's got a restrictor plate on there, or not, not a restrictor plate, but you know, the, that doesn't move water very well. My pump was working really hard. It was circulating water through but it was working really hard and uh, spinning, you know, just just like when you plug up a fan. If I were to put uh, cardboard on the back of this, they would start running faster. Well, that burns them out. Not only is it drawing more power for that thing to spin faster, um, it's, you know, it's working harder. It burns your pumps out. Um, so, that's coming out. And... We're just going to go back to nice open fittings. Um, this is what was on the bottom. I had to change a couple things and I put some new thread tape on everything. Uh, going to tape this guy off yet and then that will connect my braided line from the coil. That's half inch to half inch. They're all 30 inch pieces. I couldn't find a piece long enough, so I got a coupler in there. So, that's down to its last little trickle. I guess it's time to crank that guy out. And this will, well, I want to let it get all the way empty, so I'm going to let it just chill here for a little bit and that, until that stops running. I want it to be all the way empty before I pull this because I don't want too much water getting trapped inside of this case already. I think I'm going to, you know, drill a hole uh, at the very bottom of this. And I've got a little bit of room, uh, a couple inches to jack this up. So I'm going to lift it up, drill a small hole at the bottom of the pan um, and have it kind of leaning like so. So if any water moisture gets trapped inside of here, it can drain out and uh, you know, that'll get caught in these guys and then spill in there 
there's uh, about an inch of water in there right now it's slowly going over to the drain on that side and then as soon as I start a fire just that heat will dry this out real good so I'm not I'm not worried about the standing water right now I just got to get this system sealed up so um, I'm gonna let this empty out the rest of the way we'll get our new piece in there crank that down and I can get a fire going and uh, we can watch the temperature go up cool cool all right I open the water it is filling this takes a while so I'm not going to record the whole thing when it starts getting close I'll be able to hear it um, new lines on there cranked in there just super tight so we'll keep an eye on all of this as it's filling and as this starts getting close I'll be able to hear the air rushing through here um, but, uh, and then I've got the faucet uh, upstairs open so it won't you know jolt the system when it all fills it allows it to bleed out the air out of the whole system I've got um, sit, uh, kitchen bathroom sinks and the tub open so it'll push air out of the whole system there won't be any jarring of any of the pipes anywhere and then you shut it down from furthest to nearest and uh, do your final pressure test and when that last faucet closes it will achieve max pressure and you want to have it fairly quiet for this process you can hear everything so anyways I'm gonna keep an eye on this for a couple more minutes until it gets close to being full I'll go shut down my faucets and then we'll make sure it's holding pressure get the fire going okay okay everything's pressure tested she's holding pressure but listen real closely It's uh, it's not wanting to pull the water up out of the tank very much. It doesn't seem. I even you know in case there was some air trapped in there, I relieved this a little bit, let some water out in case there was air in there, and uh, it seemed to help while it was open. As soon as I closed it, it uh, went back to running like this. So. I've got the fittings to set up the pump on the bottom pulling so it'll never run dry. There'll never be air trapped down there. Um, and then it'll just push the water out the other way. You know, or right here it's sucking it out of the tank and pushing it into the line. There it might work more efficiently uh, pulling it down. And pushing it into the tank and then you know any bubbles that are trapped in here will just get sucked through the line and uh, purged into the tank and then relieved through here when I open another faucet and let it just run out so that's the plan constantly troubleshooting if I were to if I were to light a fire like this while this is not circulating it would boil the water in the coil and the steam would would essentially blow the system up it would it would toast this line that fitting would just blow right off see it sounded like it wants to go but it obviously just doesn't like drawing the water straight up there there's got to be an air bubble trapped in there and I don't want any risk of a bubble getting trapped in there again you know if there's a, a, a bubble in in this line that makes it into the tank I don't want it to get trapped there and have this thing doing this while I got a you know fire running uh, in the middle of January I don't want to be messing with this you know while the weather is nice enough outside what would you listen to that it pulled it through hmm. 
Interesting. Oh, and it sucked it back up. I'm gonna let the faucet go for a little bit. Maybe I can set the camera right here. I'm gonna go open a faucet upstairs. And we'll see what happens. Maybe I can get that air bubble out of here. system. Let's let it run for a little bit. That's what it's supposed to sound like. I mean, if it's going to work, go with it, right? stuff should be making its way out. I imagine this is drawing from the top of the tank. And I don't know if that goes down and shoots into the bottom or if it just shoots in right there. I, that I don't know. I don't know how these things are internally put together. But if it's going to work, I would prefer to just go with it. Hmm. Well, I'm going to give this some time. And keep an eye on it. This is one of these things. If you're going to put together a system like this, function test the crap out of everything and it'll go overkill on making sure it's going to work before you put heat to that copper coil because that will very quickly undo everything you just got right um, or not quite right yet you know and it'll make problems worse yeah, see there's still some air in there Yeah, we're going to give this some time. I'm going to keep uh, keep an eye on it, let it run for a good half an hour. Why not? We already dumped 80 gallons down the drain today. What's another <laughs> 20, 30? So, all right, we'll check back when it's time to light the fire. If I have to change anything, I'll explain it later. Well... She's running, she's been running. I ran all the faucets for a good 10 minutes. Uh, and then again, reverse order, shut them down from the furthest point away to the closest point away. Uh, pump never had another hiccup whole time. So I've got fire started, excuse the mess. I had to turn my basement upside down to do this today. Oh, fire is going. I'm just going to let her roar wide open. But yeah, the heater coil, if you didn't see previous episodes, is 3 8 inch copper, 20 foot. Uh, it's in a 6 inch pipe. I used a 4 inch pipe and rolled the copper around that. Um, got it real nice and tight to the pipe and then I kind of 
stretched it a little bit so it's not touching, you know, so the heat can get all the way around each, you know, the whole coil. Uh, if you've got it compressed too tight, uh, you can get cold spots, um, and then that also builds up creosote. So, and again, if you're going to do a system like this, uh, you got to have a hot fire once in a while. Just let her rip. You know, throw some some soft wood in there and just let her go wide open, and that'll actually clean your pipe out. Otherwise, you run a risk of building up too much creosote if you just you know keep her keep her damper down all the time. <clears throat> Once in a while, you gotta just let her rip. So we got our temperature probe hooked up. That's. Uh, Tape down with a piece piece of weather stripping, um, foam weather stripping, and then I wrap the wire around that a couple times. So it's on there pretty good, and that's right on my uh, hot that goes into the house. Exactly what I did on the last one gives me a digital readout. It takes a little watch battery. No, nope. battery's getting low on the phone. So this is our starting temperature. We should be able to watch it climb in a while. Uh, it, it takes it a while to get with with fresh cold water. It'll take it probably an hour to get up to 80 degrees. Once it's up to 80 degrees, uh, another 30 minutes, and we'll be up over 110. You know, I usually run her about uh, 120 to 140 degrees. I try not to let it get hotter than that, but we don't run wide open fires uh, unless necessary. So I'm going to let it run wide open for a while, burn out the pipes, and get this thing up to 80, 90. And then I'll choke it down and just let it do its thing. But uh, it's working. Um, I'll do a final report back when she's uh, all the way up to temp and we've got hot dishwashing water. All right check back and that should be the end of the video unless something crazy happens all right well I've been going for about 40 minutes now we are already 78.3 and it's continually climbing um, we'll probably see it click to 78.5 in just a moment here but uh, yeah, like I said, getting the whole system warmed up the first time. And all the it's not just the water, it's the tank, it's the insulation, it's this you know outer shell, uh, the inside of it will will also lock in heat. So the whole thing needs to warm up this first time. Um, once I get over 90, it really climbs. When this outgoing water going into the coil and coming back into the tank uh, what, as this gets warmer and warmer it allows that to really it, it, it progressively speeds up its recovery time like this is taking you know we're we're you know at uh, 15 degrees in about 40 minutes but we're you know starting from a, a cold cold tank um, so, yeah, we'll check back when she's, uh, at about 120, but, uh, you know, just to ensure that we have no leaks, you know, and I'm literally just going to hang out down here and listen to this thing. I'm going to let that fan go, dry the little bit of moisture left behind the tank. Um, dry that all the way out because that's been wet for years so you know, I'll probably let this fan go for until the morning and just just dry it out get it all the way dry who knows how long that has been just damp and wet and gross with a bunch of shit piled up behind it so um, you know this just turned out to be a really big pain in the butt but it's going to be a good thing this is going to work out really good with the uh, DC elements, the one hardwired solar panels so every day, all day. Um, every time the sun comes out, this will be warming water, a 600 watt element, and another 600 watt element as a dump load. Um, 
and then also uh, tying in the solar thermo circulation loop you know we're gonna we're gonna be able to maintain 120 uh, degree water year-round I, I don't see any reason why not and I'm excited about just this being a new tank with with new uh, you know the, the foam insulation is so much more efficient that you know quadruple the R value so this is gonna hold on to temperature better and I'm not leaking anymore you know that was a huge thing and uh, just another reason why we were losing water temperatures because we were literally losing water so hot water as the as the fire burns down to just coals and it stops really warming water just kind of maintaining it um, this was losing water the whole time not a lot but it's a steady it was dripping pretty fast you know probably a couple gallons a day and uh, with water, you know, as that water is leaking out, that's pulling cold water back into the system, which is uh, slowly plummeting the temperature. Um, so, real excited about this. It's going to be, it's going to pay off its itself fast. I'm going to have to burn less wood to uh, keep water hot, you know, and just, just burn to keep the house warm when it's necessary. Um, and, you know, kind of redesigning the piping this year um, and doing the modifications I did to the fireplace. I made a new baffle for the back. And you can't see it because it's full. But what it is doing is it's making the fire swirl inside of there instead of just torching straight through. Um, so the uh, I'm getting way more heat, way, way, way more heat out of my load of wood and probably quadruple the burn time even with the damper all the way open. Um, so that alone is going to massively increase efficiency and then I put a new floor in the wood burner um, it was perforated all the way through so that was allowing air to sneak up and really just torch the coals and yeah it would get extremely hot but it was getting so hot it was blowing up bricks and it was burning out the coals faster than I want them to so I put a new solid piece of steel in there I went with a 12 gauge I forget it it's a 316 inch or something like that and then I drilled six one inch holes front and center so all of the air that comes in is coming from only front and center when this door is closed uh, so it's, it's really making the air tumble inside of there uh, before it gets sucked out the, the chimney pipe. So all in all, lots of new exciting things this year, you know, um, yeah, that is, that's, that's hard to touch. That's extremely hot air that's uh, going up into the house. And I'm not going to break down that whole system because that's a whole different video. But uh, go ahead and subscribe and go through my videos. I've done a whole bunch of stuff on different upgrades to all of these systems. Uh, if you're halfway interested in this stuff, i got a lot of videos. Um, and it's upgrade after upgrade after upgrade why this broke down why I upgraded to this and this is how it works uh, six months a year 18 months down the road um, if this is the first video I've ever seen I am 100% off the grid um, uh, energy wise I don't get any uh, gas or electric from the city um, I've got 1,200 watts of solar panels outside, an 800 watt wind turbine outside. Um, I break this down, but uh, this is my power plant, and that's my furnace slash water heater system. 
and uh, that's my fuel. <laughs> all right, I still got a big mess to clean up, so if you stuck it through all the way to the end, thank you very much. Um, I hope you learned something, and God bless America, God bless you. And good morning. So, um, I decided just to give you a quick uh, update in the morning. Uh, I got it up to 121 last night. I took a nice scolding hot bath that brought the tank down to uh, 107. Um, and without restocking the wood burner, it has recovered to 116. Um, so simply restocking that will very quickly bring her back over uh, 120 but didn't have any problems with uh, any more air bubbles getting caught in the motor so I think we're good to go thanks again God bless you